Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Tom McNamara. Since its founding in 1975, the Center for Creative Photography is one of the most important places in the world for the study of the history of photography. And it's located right here on the University of Arizona campus. Uh, this year, the center continues its legacy with the North American debut of the Linda McCartney Retrospective. Now this show features 176 photographs and some additional archival material that spans her career from 1965 to 1997. Of course, being married to her husband, Paul McCartney, gave Linda phenomenal behind the scenes access to the Beatles. And she was the first woman photographer to have a photo on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And you may remember that iconic photo. Here to tell us a little bit more about the Linda McCartney retrospective at the Center for Creative Photography is that institution's chief curator, Becky Senf. And Becky, thank you so much for joining us. Linda McCartney, when you even hear the name, it touches your heart. Her connection to Tucson is deep and sentimental and forever. For those who aren't as well-versed, haven't been here in a while, what is Linda's connection to Tucson? Sure. She yeah. came to Tucson to study at the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. She studied art history here. And really importantly, it's where she was introduced to the art of photography through a class with Hazel Larson Archer. Um, it was just a two class series that she attended, but it was where she got introduced to the art of photography. And then she moved away from Tucson, but then her she and her very famous husband uh, bought property in Tucson and came back. It was so that they could keep horses mm -hmm. and so that she could nurture her connection to the Sonoran Desert, which she really felt very close to. In talking about the exhibit, tell us about it. And let me ask you, what are we going to learn about Linda McCartney and the Beatles from the exhibit? The exhibition is organized into three sections. So the initial portion is her family photography and it's where you see her and Paul falling in love. And those photographs of their early relationship are so beautiful and so tender. And they really show the mutual respect and the playfulness between the two of them. And then you see the kids be born and grow up within the family. I think those pictures are really special and important. Then there's a section of her photographs of artists, which include all of the rock musicians she photographed, Janis Joplin and Aretha Franklin and uh, the, the Doors and the Beatles. And so people are gonna recognize a lot of those photographs and it's gonna bring back all of their close connections to those musicians. And then we have a special section in this exhibition about her photographic exploration, where you'll see her working in different processes and media, learning about how to create different kinds of prints and a wonderful section of Polaroid prints where she's making mm. quick prints and snapshots and family photographs that are part of her personal uh, archive. Is there a part of her exhibit that really touches your heart the most, really speaks to you? I, For me, I think yeah. it's the family photographs yeah. and watching her watch her family and the way that she appreciates her connection with Paul and the space that she gives her kids to grow up in this very famous and unusual family. You can really see and feel all of that in the photographs. And I find it, um, I found it very poignant, truthfully. How, how are people reacting to it? Uh, what's sort of been the vibe among those who've seen it? People have been really excited. We've had such a positive response. The galleries have been full. And um, on our opening day, our opening community day, I had somebody come out of the gallery and he said, seeing the exhibition and all these photographs makes me wanna sing. And it, it was really very touching. I think that the photographs are bringing people closer to things that are really important and moving to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that Linda provides a very intimate and easy access to her subjects in a way that makes the photographs feel really accessible. If you didn't know her before now, and, and most people never met her personally, uh, I bet that exhibit, as you're saying, really helps you to get to know her. I, I think it does. Yeah. And I mean, quite frankly, Paul McCartney too. Mm -hmm. I think seeing him through her lens, quite literally, brings us a different kind of understanding of him. Yeah, it's a feather in the cap of the Center for Creative Photography to, to land this exhibit, but almost as much of, of a feather, it's, it's so natural that where else 
would you put Linda McCartney's work than Tucson, Arizona and a great institution like yours? Yeah, we felt like it's been a real homecoming. Mm -hmm. It really, it feels very sentimental to have her work at the Center for Creative Photography where she and Paul visited mm -hmm. um, in the past. And, and to be able to put her in a context that looks at her photographic practice, her education here in Tucson, and the amazing rock and roll work that she did that she's known mm -hmm. worldwide for. And it, it really almost keeps that connection with Paul and Linda, and certainly with Paul now, the fact that you know, her work is here, her, uh, the, the traces of her life, the memories of her life are here, and Paul and Linda live on together in this place and always will. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really beautifully said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Becky, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And you can see the Linda McCartney retrospective on display at the Center for Creative Photography right here on the University of Arizona campus from now until August 5th, 2023. Thanks for watching Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Tom McNamara, and we'll see you again soon.